Hello everyone. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about uh, squad tactics and strategies and how we use them in squad ops and how some of this can actually translate to squad vanilla play as well. We're going to go over two scenarios. One's going to be Operation Foxheart. This is a setup for Operation Foxheart. U.S. attacks uh, from the west and they have to use the bridges. The INS has to defend the bridges in the palace. And the second scenario we're going to look at is going to be more of a micro compound breach uh, scenario. So first off, what is defeat in detail? Defeat in detail is spreading your enemy thin and attacking with a larger force on a smaller force when you're facing an attack versus defense scenario. Normally, as we all know in squad, the defenders always have a uh, small advantage, right? On a one-to-one -one scale, or even, you know, sometimes that can even be a two-to-one scale. That defender's advantage, you know, forcing them into firing positions that you're set up in behind good cover, concealed, you're able to knock out a significant amount of enemy forces before they can actually um, penetrate your defense, uh, which is why, you know, you see a lot of defenders holding in buildings and stuff like that because that fatal funnel, right, that door, you're able to get a lot of players coming through that door um, and that defender's advantage really shines when it comes to breaching compounds. So we're, we'll look at breaching compounds after we look at the, the kind of macro scale of defeat and detail and force concentration. So looking at this scenario, INS usually has to watch all five of the bridges simply because they need that security. They need to know that no bridge is getting crossed, right? US, on the other hand, being the aggressors, they only really need to cross one bridge. They don't need to keep eyes on all bridge because INS doesn't usually poke out of uh, the peninsula. However, what you can do knowing this information is you can pick a singular point and push over the point with a lot of your forces, uh, kind of equalizing that defender's advantage. So, how do we go about doing this? Knowing the information that INS has to watch all five bridges, we need to ensure that INS stays defending all five bridges. So as US, what you can do is send a squad to every bridge. Now that you have a squad at every bridge, without crossing, without you know, getting engaged and getting tangled up in a firefight, you can begin trading fire with the enemy from a safe distance, ensuring that they stay pinned and their attention is on the bridge, right? So now at this point, you have solidified the knowledge that you have attention on all five bridges and INS mans all five bridges. After knowing this information and after abusing the fact that INS has to use and uh, their vision to cover all five bridges, what you can do is you can begin maneuvering fast and covertly reinforcements to a singular bridge you want to push. Let's just use bridge two for this, this example. Let's say every squad, except for the squad on bridge two, bridge two is marked by the, uh, we'll mark it with the attack marker, All right? Let's say bridge two is the bridge we want to hit. What we can now do is split all of these squads, or however you want to do this, whether you wanted to send a fire team to, uh, each one of these bridges from the get-go or however you want to split your forces. What you can do at this point is take all these squads that are on all the other bridges and have them all send one fire team. So we're going to essentially split these squads now. Uh, we'll, we'll define that with, uh, I guess, helmets. So these are now all fire teams, right? And then you have the remainder of those fire teams. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Stack on bridge two. You now have... I guess one, two, about a 2.5 to one advantage on bridge two, right? You now have that numbers advantage. And like I said before, if you did this fast enough and you did it quietly and, and uh, without being seen. So once again, speed and stealth are very important to this maneuver. If you are able to execute this without the insurgents knowing that you've pulled this maneuver off, they will maintain their security on these bridges while your fire teams uh, continue to draw fire and, uh, and attention on those bridges, right? Because they'll, they'll still think they're in contact because you're still throwing rounds at them and they'll still uh, have to maintain control over that bridge with their full squad. Now, let's say you mess up and they do spot you or you take too long doing this, then you do run into the chance of uh, insurgents uh, as well reinforcing this bridge with, uh, with elements from the other bridges. But if you do it fast and quietly, you should be able to get these troops back over to the second bridge in order to abuse your force multiplier. Now what you can do is cross that bridge, crush that singular point uh, that's defending the, uh, the bridge. You can crush that, 
and then cut off the south or you can go straight um, start, start clearing out this northern block or however you want to do it. But that's how force multiplying and force concentration um, works on the macro scale. So this is defeat in detail because you're using superior force on one single area. Even though you started with the 40 v 40 scenario, you're able to manipulate the battlefield using certain maneuvers and certain distractions to ensure that you can push a singular bridge with a full force multiplier. Of course, you know, speed and, um, you know, cover is very important for this because being able to maneuver without the enemy, you know, reading your strategy, that's a very important thing uh, to do. Now we're gonna look at this on the micro scale and this is gonna apply more to, more to public play, right? So I'm going to clear the map real fast, and we're going to scroll in real close onto Palace. Now we're going to take it down to the micro scale, right? Let's say a squad is attacking another squad, right? So let's say insurgents are holed up in Palace, right? Let's say they got uh, on the first floor. I'll, I'll mark the entrances right now. There's an entrance here, entrance here, here, and here. So there's four entrances, and insurgents need to maintain security over each one of these four ways. So let's say there's three there. Let's just stack, double stack a couple of these guys. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Let's just say this is how the defenders are set up their defense. So they have to watch every single doorway. They have to as insurgents, right? Because there's no way you're guarding a building and not securing all the entrances to that building. Now, as U.S., how you want to breach this building is with aggression, with speed, and on a single point. And you can see how that's demonstrated in this video. So let's say we pick this north entry. Right? And we're stacked to breach this north entry. Now, this isn't a video on breaching because that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother topic where we got to talk about outside perimeter, locking down windows, locking down doorways, locking down um, the hallways and movement of the team inside. Uh, we're just going to simply focus on the force concentration and uh, uh, breaching a singular point in this video. Now, very obviously in this scenario, just by looking at this picture, you can see why we, we want to push that singular point because they have to dedicate people watching the other exits as defenders you have to watch certain doors right because you don't necessarily know which door they're going to breach unless you somehow gain that intelligence because you have a secondary uh, point outside the defense point like an op or something like that you don't know which door they're going to watch or they're going to breach so they have to watch every single door as us you can abuse this knowledge knowing that if you push a singular point with your entire force Yes, you will lose people breaching this northern door, right? It's, it's inevitable. It happens. It's going to happen in a, in a defender's um, a de defense versus assault uh, scenario, right? You are going to lose the first couple guys through that door. But once you push through that door, if you push fast enough, you're going to lose a couple of your guys. But so are they. But now you have entry into the, into the building and you can work with that, right? Instead, the alternate scenario is if you take your people... And you try to breach multiple entry points. You see how you just immediately split your force multiplier? You see how now you're instead of a, a, a 9v2 scenario, 9v4 scenario, scenario, you now have a 3v2, 3v2, and a 3v2 scenario. And now it's near impossible to breach this building. This is why you need to stack and focus on a singular point when attacking a defending force. Because you can abuse the amount of cover that they need to defend by hitting a singular, singular point with the majority of your force. So anyways, I hope this kind of helped uh, demonstrate uh, defeat in detail and force concentration for you guys. Like I said before, a lot of this mostly applies to squad ops. But as you can see, this scenario right here, this is kind of like a uh, vanilla scenario, right? Like if this was a cat flag and you're trying to get into the cat point, um, you can see why you don't want to breach from multiple sides unless you have the numbers to do so. Um, because there is such a thing as oversaturation, right? Like if we just have 50 guys coming in this north hole, um, you don't really want to do that, but you know, oversaturation is a topic for another time, but you can see uh, what I want to talk about in this video was force concentration and how you can abuse the numbers you have as attack to defeat a defending team, even if you're on a one-to-one -one numbers ratio or even lower, right? So yeah, I hope this got, uh, this video helped to, uh, 
teach you guys that concept of defeat in detail and force concentration. I'm going to have more videos like this in the future simply because we've been doing a lot of AARs and squad ops and I've been enjoying making those. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think of the video. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in the next one.